Today is our first Sunday in the month of June. The year 2020 is our year of eagle flight greater heights. In the midst of storms, we soar as eagles. And the month of June is our month of divine healing. The title of my message this morning is Divine Healing Today. Divine Healing Today. Father, we thank you for your word. We speak a blessing over it. Heal your people, Almighty God. Help us, Almighty Father, to be able to heal others in the name that is above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. So, Divine Healing Today divine healing today all of us already know that healing belongs to us because jesus paid the price on the cross we were looking on friday on some of the causes of sicknesses and we are not going to go into that but there are three major things that i would like us to look at this sunday morning uh, the first one is that healing is God's promise. Why? Because there is no father who would love to see his children being sicklings, being ill, struggling. Every father wants to see their children healthy. So when you are not feeling well, it bothers your father in heaven. The same way that I am a father here on earth. And when I see my child, not even sick, when I see my child just looking unhappy, I want to know what's happening. Smile. What's happening? You must be happy. Imagine I'm just an earthly father and I'm concerned. I want to see my children happy. I want to see my, my, to see my children healthy. What about our father in heaven? He definitely is interested. So the first thing is we look at God's promise. And the next thing we will look at the fact that you have to believe and then the last thing is that you must act. Now, we are going to look at this uh, topic, divine healing today, in two ways. The first one is you were healed. So, you can believe God for him to heal you. And he's willing to heal you. That's the first part. The second part is that we want to look at it in such a way that you are an instrument for healing to other people. We are talking about this for your own healing in case you are not feeling well or maybe in future you might be attacked by a sickness or illness or ailment. Or physically, it can also be in your soul which, which, which can be uh, uh, said um, a, a heartbreak, for example. Jesus said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. So, um, whether it's sickness of the soul or it's sickness, sickness of the spirit is sin, obviously, and sickness of the body, whatever the case might be, it can be for you or you actually being used. I want to challenge us so that we are ready to pray for other people to be healed. There are so many people who are sick and many of them can't even afford the medical bills. So we want to challenge ourselves this morning to be used by God so that we can touch lives out there, not just to preach salvation to them, but to actually pray for them for healing. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 26. Uh, we are now looking at God's promise. Exodus 23, verse 25 to 26. It says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. He will take away sickness from among you. There shall not be anybody barren in your midst. Barrenness is another type of healing that some people need. They don't have children. They want to have children. Their womb needs healing. God will take away sickness from among you because you are serving. Him. So the first thing is, are you serving God? Are you worshipping God? Are you serving him? Yes. Oh, you deserve to be healed. You deserve to be healed. That's God's promise. And he actually promises long life for you. And Isaiah chapter 53 and verse number 5. Isaiah 53. Let's start from verse 4 to verse 5. 
Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. Some versions say with his stripes we were healed. The beatings, the flogging that took place on Jesus was actually to pay for our healing. So we are not supposed to be sick because the price was paid. And the people, anybody you meet who believes in Jesus should not be sick. God should use you and me to heal those people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's God's promise. That is God's promise. So that's the first thing. God's promise is there for our healing and for the healing of anybody who will ever believe in the name of Jesus Christ. So the first thing just to know is when you meet somebody and say, I'm sick, I'm having problems, please pray for me. Make sure they are born again. Help them to pray the, the sinner's prayer. They receive Jesus as their personal savior. After that, they are now a child of God. They deserve healing. Pray for them by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the first thing is God's promise. The second thing is you must believe. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. For without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible to please God. If you don't believe in God, you cannot be healed. Some people believe in God, but they don't believe in healing. They believe in salvation. There are actually churches that just believe in salvation. Yes, they are saved. They will actually go to heaven. But they will go, maybe the sicknesses will kill them earlier because they don't believe in miracles. But we have already established that God promised us a healing. I mean, even without, even if he had not promised the healing, he's such a loving father. If an earthly father runs around to see that they take their child to hospital, they, they make sure they do something to make their child happy and healthy. What about our God? So you must believe. James chapter 1 verse 6 to 7. But let them ask in faith, nothing wavering. For they that waver are like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not those who waver think they should receive anything of the Lord. Some people don't fully believe. They say, ah, this sickness, I think it's from God. It's a punishment from God. Why do you rush to believe it's a punishment from God? Okay, if it is a punishment from God, why don't you ask God for forgiveness? After you ask for forgiveness, believe that he has forgiven you, and now you walk in divine healing. God can heal you after that. Don't be wavering. But let them ask in faith, nothing wavering. Let them ask in faith, nothing wavering. It's important for you to believe. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Glory to the living God. God is not a man. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man. He's not like you and me. You and me, we, we actually promise people some things and we deliver. We try our best to deliver what we promise. Imagine Jehovah. Jehovah says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15 26. Exodus 15 26. I am the Lord who heals you. God is a faithful God. God is not man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? We must believe that healing belongs to us. We must believe that God can use you and me to actually heal others. I know some people will say, you see, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can't lay hands on the sick and recover. It's not true. Kenneth Hagin is one of the greatest men of God that ever lived on earth. Kenneth Hagin started off without the Holy Spirit. He was laying hands on people and they were recovering by faith. By faith. By faith. So don't give an excuse that I have not yet received the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you see, when I receive the Holy Spirit, I shall pray for the, the sick and they will recover. Remember, after all, we are not saying for the sick to be healed. It's, just, it's not just about laying on of hands. You can speak a word. 
You can be tight. You can pray, Lord, anoint my fingers. That is, I, I send text messages or WhatsApp messages or messenger. Lord, let people receive their healing. Lord, anoint my voice. That is, I pray for someone on the phone. You know that we have so many testimonies of that nature where we have prayed for people via WhatsApp text, via voice note on WhatsApp, via phone call, and somebody gets healed in another country, far away. Distance is not a barrier. The anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit upon your voice can heal the sick. Provided you believe and the person believes, it is done. God is not a man. And then, so we said, we look at God's promise. We looked at uh, you must believe that God can heal you and you can be used to heal others. And then finally, act. You must take a step. Mark chapter 16 and verse number 17. Mark 16, verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. They will cast out demons. Many diseases are caused by demons. Many people's problems are caused by demons. So if you can cast out demons and you can, you know, lay hands on the sick, they will recover. They will be healed. You must act. If you are sick, believe that God can heal you. Pray that God can heal you. You can even lay a hand on yourself. I have laid my hand on myself. And it works. In the name of Jesus, headache, I curse you. Ah, ah, I'm free. I've laid hands on myself. Why? Because they that believe shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So do I believe? Yes. Am I sick? Yes. So I lay hands on myself and I recover. Is somebody believing in the Lord and, and, and uh, you also believing in the Lord and then you lay hands on them and they recover. Or you speak a word and they recover. You must act. Whether you are the one who is sick or it's another person who is sick, there must be action in the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let me quickly look at um, the story. Luke chapter 8 verse 43 to 48. Luke 8, verse 43 to 48. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could he be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. We know that story. Luke 8, verse 43 to 48. The woman who had the issue of blood, what did she do? She decided in her heart that if I can just touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, I will be healed. You must take steps. You remember the story of the four men that came carrying a paralytic who could not walk. They brought him to Jesus. And they saw that they, it was impossible for, 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 for them to enter, to get to where Jesus was. Jesus was preaching in a house. And people were gathered everywhere. What did they do? They removed the roof. <laughs> and lowered the paralytic. And Jesus said, wow, what kind of faith is this? And the man left that place healed. You must take a step. You must take a step. Those men believed that Jesus could do something. There are so many people that are paralyzed right now. Paralyzed in their minds. Paralyzed in their souls. Paralyzed in their spirits. Paralyzed in their physical body. But we lack people like those four men. Who believed that something could be done for them. Hallelujah. I want us to go before the Lord and pray. If you are sick, pray for healing. If there is somebody sick, pray for them. 